<clears throat> Hello and welcome to Calagram Market, our daily show on Nifty, Bank Nifty and New Zealand. Where we look at charts, where we look at open interest data and we look at FID data to form an informed opinion on what will market do tomorrow. And what else do we do? We also take some trades for tomorrow. Um, and uh, okay, without further ado, let me just uh, get out of the way and bring in the most important things, which is the charts. Okay, so let's start with Nifty, the most important chart. So today, so we had talked about this on Friday, that the middle of, on Thursday rather, the middle of the chart is important, middle of the channel is important. <coughs> if it breaks, there can be negativity in the market. So if you look at this, on 8th April, uh, for the forecast for 8th April, we had said that gap is filled, there is no rejection, medium to long term is negative and we had said that market has downside structurally bullish only about 1800 and we had said that it is a very happy uh, call selling scenario no buy puts because uh, weekend put spreads are attractive all of this has played out as market is down almost like a half a percent today call sales uh, of course uh, performed the best even uh, bear call spreads performed very well so let's look at today's this thing today's candle is a negative doji and it is currently below the middle of that short term channel right uh, that is the that's what the chart is saying now let's look at open interest data so today's open interest right it was actually a very mixed bag uh, in the morning but towards the afternoon it became very clear that everybody sold puts took sold calls 20 million calls sold just 2 million puts and very important point 17800 had almost 2 million put unwinds right and that has led us to this if you look at this, right, the PCR at uh, or the put to call difference at 17,800, there are around 6 million calls and 2 million puts. Very heavy towards here, very low PCR, 80 million calls, 50 million puts. Net net, this is a very negative looking, this is a classic negative option chain and I'll be very surprised if market uh, does not fall tomorrow, right. So if you have sold calls over uh, the weekend, then you should hold on to that call absolutely. And tomorrow if there is any rise, it's a selling opportunity. Now let's look at FII data, FII data has turned negative again. So here's the important thing, right. Every time we saw the gap between this green and red widen, the market has always turned negative. And today we can see FII sold around 30k calls sold very small quantities of puts they sold futures 2000 crores sold stocks 1000 crores everything about this thing is screaming negative so a negative option chain a negative intraday option chain a negative uh, overall option chain picture a negative pcr a negative fi data and fi stock data negative fi option data there is nothing about the market which is encouraging now it is absolutely not a long it is definitely a short and <clears throat> what will be the trades uh, Again, right, I don't want to commit big and sell puts, sorry, uh, buy puts. I would want to sell uh, calls happily, uh, probably even longer term calls of April, June, uh, maybe May end. I don't think I want to uh, sell calls, uh, sell puts because that is very risky. Don't sell straddles for sure because if there's a negative downside, it will be a very massive downside. And here's the thing, right? This is an ultra mega long weekend coming on Thursday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. How many days is that? Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Almost five days theta you will get, right? It's a super truncated trading week. It is extremely tempting to go sell straddles for neutrality at this hour. But if on Monday market moves in either direction, it will be a big problem. So my ideal bet for monday which i'll start even today will be to sell longer term calls for two reasons one the gamma is very low on that which is the movement with delta second is uh, i don't want to time the market for such a short term event when i know that the long term trend is negative but in the medium term there could be some fluctuation right so my trades are always going to be geared towards uh, my trades are always going to be geared towards uh, selling calls of slightly longer duration, right? This is no questions asked for me. I'll happily sell calls for slightly long term duration, right? Uh, now let's look at Bank Nifty. Bank Nifty, super, super interesting chart. 
it is so we have talked about this that it's going to be very tricky to sell calls if mark so on thursday's analysis we had said that if bank nifty closes on the stem of this shooting star we have to wait and not trade because until and unless this channel breaks it is going to be bearish if it breaks it is going to be bullish today also it tried to break the channel it could not and it came back into the channel you can see a huge rejection big here see it's very difficult to predict if it's a consolidation or if it is a breakout but my thing is this right i don't want to gamble on what it will do if it breaks this line i'll go long if it comes back i'll go short but you also have to understand that it's not going to be easy to go down either because there are three moving <coughs> averages here which are going to act as supports this gap fill will act as a support so it's very tricky to trade bank nifty now nifty form although let's let's not forget that the long term trend seems to be negative there was a fake out here but fake out did not continue so this is a downward trending channel with a fake out <coughs> i attempted to short bank nifty but i don't want to do that because although it is getting rejected here it's a very tight consolidation which is happening there's no point gambling right so uh, i'd probably hold my horses on bank nifty also i don't have any reliable option data or fia data for bank nifty so i'm like you know what i'm going to take a chill pill and not do anything on bank nifty finally moving to usd and uh, super interesting actually uh, on the daily chart overseas it gave a bullish inverted dragonfly doji or hammer or whatever you want to call it right so there is upside in usd and nr but let's look at domestic charts and let me just share my screen so look at this right this is a domestic chart of usd inr today has been a bullish day it went down and went up all the way here this is a strong bullish candle there is some rejection here but if you look at a shorter time frame right you will see that it's not that clear a long or a short the only thing we can be sure about at this point is that usd inr in the longer term looks bullish and i'll tell you why look at the weekly candle right this has formed a bullish dragonfly doji uh, here followed by a weekly engulfing candle to begin with it's a positive candle and if this candle closes above this level then we have a dragonfly doji confirmed with a bullish engulfing which is going to be positive even otherwise if you look at usd nr's overall movement today right it has been a down move and a carrying on all the way up to 76 and closing even if you look at international markets and let me just uh, open that this is a this is a support we had drawn some time back this is a dragonfly doji and there is a possibility that it can continue further so net net right <coughs> bank nifty i am uncertain but usd and i am expecting an upside nifty i am expecting a downside um, so overall the market looks fairly weak right so yeah i mean market is kind of trendless to week but today's closing has been especially weak and it closed below this channel so tomorrow we might see a gap down uh, but the bigger picture is that right see tomorrow's if you come to know now that tomorrow is going to be a gap down it is absolutely of no use from an actionable point of view for you right but the important point is that if there is an uptick it's a chance to sell and as long as nifty is going to hover below this level there's always a chance to sell some call spreads so for example on friday i was short 17800 call and long 18000 call so basically it's a 200 point call spread uh, so i'll i'll show you what my uh, builder was so if you look at this right i had uh, this position on 
Friday. This was my position, right? So basically, I shorted 17,800 and bought 18,000. If I had shorted only 17,800, it would have been way better. But uh, because I did both, I lost some. But I, of course, slept peacefully on the weekend. It might have been better for me to hold it. I didn't carry it. I, of course, uh, squared it off uh, when the market opened this morning. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. But anyway, uh, it is what it is. But if you take a position like this, right, the good thing is, see, what's your view? If 18,000 breaks, it is going to be trouble. So then short the call somewhere around here and buy a protection somewhere around here. If you do this, the good thing is that you can short for the downside and you can be protected if anything happens beyond the breakout zone. So another trade you can do is probably short 17 or let me do this, right? Uh, let's try to build a strategy for this. So clear positions. Uh, what I'll do is I'll do a ready-made strategy of a longer term, let's say April 28th. And I'll do a bearish bear call spread. And I'll short a 17,800. And I'll long an 18,100. See, the good thing about it is, it, it has a bad risk reward ratio, but it also gives you a good, I mean, it's a sell call. It has a very decent break even. It's almost 1.3% away. Uh, but the good thing is this, right? What are you afraid of? If 18,100 breaks, it will be a breakout. But anything beyond 18,100, you are protected because of this uh, call, right? So something like this is a good thing to deploy if you think that this is going to stay in the channel. But another way to look at it is, if you are thinking that this is going to stay in the channel, then you are also potentially playing for a downside, right? In which case you can outright go by a bull sorry bear put spread also but for a short term movement when you think that downside is not very imminent one thing you can do is take a near term option and do a call spread right for example if in today's market you could have done 17,800 18,000 call spread and if market stayed below 17,800 on Wednesday you're basically taking the entire premium so if you're worried about a breakout then one thing you can do is trade in spreads with a protection of course, if you think it's going to consolidate, that's a great strategy. But if it's going to break out, then you have to buy a call or something. But the catch there is, it's not a breakout till it breaks out. So maybe call spread is the way to go. Right. So that is our analysis for today. Let me just. Oh, tomorrow is 12th April. I'm... Thank you so much, Kashinath. Tomorrow is 12th April. So I'll change the name of this. Is there a way to combine POP and RR? Vivek is asking. Vivek, it's an excellent question. The higher the probability of profit, usually the lower your RR. Hardik is asking, please view. Hardik, the view is Nifty right now looks like it is going to struggle to cross 18,100. So selling calls can be a good idea. Uh, Arnav is asking, what happens if one lot of Nifty you in the money on expiry and didn't sell it? You get the net credit, Arnav. Uh, Hardik is asking, ICAC view. Hardik, honestly, I am very bad at stocks because you don't have, uh, basically, you don't have a ICICI, basically, you don't have a secondary data on ICICI, right? You're just trading on one thing, which is the chart. But because you asked, is there an event or something? Uh, it looks like it is going to go up here. I mean, I'm honest, like, I mean, I, I don't know this, but this chart, I, I'll be very surprised if this chart has downside. Unless, of course, today is some result or something and there is some gap down happening. Basically, I'll tell you why I think it is going to go up. Of course, it's a different story if today there was a result or something. Is there a result today? I don't know. But because you're asking ICC, you see it has crossed the 100 DMA and it has given two positive candles. And now it is at a local high in the last few days combined. Also, if you look at ICICI's weekly chart, right? It's on a very strong uptrend, although it's very early to say. Why Why did you... I'm just curious. What's with the what's the deal with ICICI? Uh, ADR. There must be an ADR, right? Since you're so worried about ICICI's price, 
Yeah, it's flat. I don't know why people are saying gap down. Is there a result event or something? Looks like it is going up. Looks like it is going up, but I don't know if your 790 call will come into picture or not because 790 is some distance away. That's the problem. Usha is asking, can I sell June calls? It's a interesting question, Usha. Uh, so here is what I like about the June call of uh, 17,000, 17, 80,000 plus. So if you sell, so here's the thing, right? You can sell the June call. The catch is this, that you should be getting out of the June call as soon as it breaks out. So I'll tell you why I like the June call, right? So let's say that you're selling only the 17,800 call. It is giving you only 1% return for April. 200, 200, basically 1.5% odd return. Uh, 217 is the premium. If you do this call, the problem is that if Nifty goes down like 600, 700 points, you're only making 200 points from this, right? So that way it is unattractive. But if you sell the June call, you're actually making 4%, 600 points. So it is as good as shorting Nifty for 4%. So this way I like June call. Also, if, if, if you short the June call and let's say Nifty goes to 17,000, right? It'll go to, you will make around 14,000 rupees. But if you sell the April call, the maximum profit on it itself is only 10,000 rupees. So June call is more profitable than... Uh, the short term April call, if you have a larger uh, short term structural view, which is if you're playing for 500 points, 600 points, etc., sell the June call. But if you're not playing for a big downside, maybe it's not a good idea uh, to play the June call. So, okay, uh, almost 17 minutes. Uh, I think I'll wind it up here. So, this was our analysis for today. We will uh, see you again tomorrow. As usual, this analysis is not. Tips, multi-bagger, recommendation, get rich quickly, make side income, whatever it is. Uh, so we'll see you again tomorrow as usual. Please uh, make sure that your most important uh, responsibility to keep your capital safe. Um, Sebin is asking where I get my USD NR chart from. Uh, I get it both from the broker's local futures and the uh, trading view chart, Sebin. Uh, also, GHHG asking why is... USDN are not a strategy builder that you can get if you log in with the broker account. If you're logging with the Google account, we don't have USDN or data free from NSE on Google account. So, yep, that is our analysis for today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys, for joining. As usual, please keep your capital safe. Take care.